Hello there, boxing fans around the world. Thank you for joining me once again here on Talk and Fight for another episode of Boxing News Today. Courtesy of our friends across the pond at Boxing247.com. Appreciate their help very much in supplying you all the news fit to print. Uh, what a weekend it was, uh, full of fighting action and uh, a few uh, incredible knockouts, I might add, as well. Uh, let's start off with a brief overview of uh, the women who fought down in London. Uh, let me just get to that story. Let me Before I get to that story, let me just uh, start you off with a, a little note from uh, Carl Frampton, a very well-recognized fighter from the UK, who spoke about... Uh, uh, the fight between Savannah Marshall and Clarissa Shields. And what he had to say uh, in a tweet was uh, quite remarkable. He said, you know, Marshall never stopped trying, but Shields was brilliant tonight. Her hand speed, accuracy, and defense off the ropes was the difference. So in a nutshell, to en encapsulate a pretty big article on the bout um, that I don't really need to read, but I highly recommend that you read, uh, because of its uh, historic importance, quite frankly. Uh, you know, Clarissa Shields, she took it by unanimous decision. Uh, she became the undisputed middleweight champion once again. And congratulations to her, by the way. I, I had picked Savannah Marshall to win. Uh, and with respect to all the other women who are fighting on that card, I was uh, I was right in all but that one, uh, with one possible exception way under the undercard, uh, I had picked, let me have a quick look here. I had picked uh, Beck Connolly to, to defeat uh, Sarah Lightman. But uh, anyway, let's, let's just quickly roll through uh, the results for those of you who are uh, unfortunate to maybe been watching uh, some other uh, events that evening. Uh, the women, as I said, fighting across the pond at the O2 Arena in London really enjoyed uh, the headline fight between Savannah Marshall and Clarissa Shields. It was, it was truly a great fight. Uh, after the fight, uh, you know, there, there were certainly some bumps and bruises to be shown, particularly the right eye of Clarissa Shields, who admitted she could barely see through it uh, from the sixth round onwards. So 10 ferocious rounds, without a doubt, makes me wonder now why uh, these types of fights uh, can't really go on to three-minute rounds as opposed to two-minute rounds. But they're, they're both, uh, both world champions, uh, but Clarissa Shields remains now undefeated with the victory whereas I believe uh, Savannah is now 12-1. and one. Uh, Great fight. So the, the full undercard results remain uh, as this. Alicia Baumgartner defeated Michaela Mayer, although Michaela Mayer uh, was a little upset with the result. But nonetheless, uh, Baumgartner won, as I said, by a razor-thin split decision, but she won. Um, Lauren Price defeated uh, Tamia Bellick, a technical knockout in round four. Uh, so another victory for the uh, Olympic gold medalist. Uh, Caroline Dubois, who we've mentioned often, um, defeated Melina Koliva um, and proved once again uh, to be one of the most exciting prospects in, in world boxing, male or female. It was a stunning knockout, quite frankly. Karis Ardenstahl um, defeated Marina Sakharov. Team GB product again, bronze medalist. Karis uh, took another impressive victory in the opening bout of the televised portion of the event and moved to 2-0 as a professional. Good for her. April Hunter, some movie uh, highlighted on Talking Fight here, has defeated uh, Erica Alvarez, um, a friend and campmate of Savannah Marshall. April Hunter, um, um, uh, trained by Pete Fury, uh, took a convincing victory in the seventh professional bout with six victories in that time. So Hunter uh, dealt with Alvarez's awkward, frustrating style very successfully, it says here in the article, connecting with jabs from the start of the first round. Good for her. Um, Ebony Jones, one of my favorite female fighters, defeated Vanessa Cab Caballero. Still undefeated after four professional fights, Ebony Jones, not Ebony Bridges, put on a measured but aggressive performance on a way to a points victory. Jones used her jab and right hand to perfection against an intelligent opponent with over 40 professional fights to her name. We also saw Shannon Ryan defeat uh, Bucha al uh, Shannon Ryan took another shutout point victory. She went 3-0 as a professional. Good for her. Uh, Georgia O'Connor, who was featured by Mike Orr on uh, Friday and his Knuckle, Knuckle Up show. Uh, Georgia O'Connor defeated Joyce Fanny. Uh, she's a 22-year-old prospect from the northeast of England, and she won against an undefeated opponent in rough and tough Belgium. 
O'Connor versus Commonwealth. You, you, sorry, O'Connor won Commonwealth Youth Gold in 2017 and now looks set to light up the professional ranks very soon. I'm sure she will. Um, the American uh, Jenny Fuchs uh, defeated Gemma Rueg. Uh, this is interesting because we, uh, Mike and I talked about her on the uh, Friday night panel show. Tokyo 2020 Olympian Jenny Fuchs uh, took her professional record of 2-0 in a competitive six rounds that will leave her a vastly more experienced professional boxer than she entered into the ring. But uh, Gemma Rueg was a tough and wily throughout the fight and didn't give the world championship bronze medalist a moment to relax in the fight. Fuchs found her rhythm more in the middle rounds and started to do significant damage, but not, not enough to stop Rueg's tenacious style, meaning Fuchs had to settle for a perfect points victory. Nice to said what opened up the entire card. Uh, Sarah Lyman defeating uh, Beck Conley on points 59-55. So there you have it. A great night of entertainment uh, supplied uh, to us from an all-female cast. While at the same time uh, headlining a Fox Sports pay-per-view uh, uh, pay event courtesy of Premier Boxing Champions coming to you from the Barclay Center in Brooklyn across the pond. Uh, boxing superstar and former longtime heavyweight uh, champion Deontay, the Bronze Bomber Wilder, who I okay, this is what I said. I said he had to come out quickly, defeat his opponent Robert Hellenius quickly, because I did not think he could stay in the long term and take headshots. So he had to come out quickly, and I thought that would have been if I was his manager. I would have told his trainers that's what we wanted him to do, come out quickly and defeat his opponent. And boy, did he ever. <laughs> Not that he came out as in quickly, but he certainly scored a knockout very quickly in the first round of their WBC heavyweight title eliminator. Uh, and so it was his first fight since uh, his loss to Tyson Fury, by the way. And bravely, I might add, uh, Wilder stepped into the ring uh, and this is a, a as a year had passed, uh, by the way, and reminded the world why he's one of the most feared punchers in boxing history, without a doubt. Um, he is a, he is a knockout artist. His record speaks for itself. Um, but he had a lot uh, to deal with over the past year, and he did come in uh, having lost a bit of weight. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, with a few seconds left to go in that first round, Wilder knocked out Hellenius, surprising me, uh, among probably many others. In the co-main event, in another mega surprise, uh, not that I didn't think that Kayla Plant would win. I thought he would win, but I certainly didn't think he would deliver a highlight reel one-punch knockout. Wow, it was incredible. Let me just read the opening paragraph here in this article. In the co-main event, former su su super middleweight world champion Kayla Plant, 22-1. and one. You might recall he lost to Canela Alvarez. Uh, with 13 knockouts to his name, by the way, delivered a highlight reel one-punch knockout over former two-time super middleweight champ Anthony the Dog Durrell, who's now 34-3-2 and two with 25 knockouts of his own. And that was in the ninth round of their WBC 168-pound title eliminator. An incredible, incredible, uh, I think it was a, a left hook to the, to the ribs, and then a knockout punch just dropped Durrell, just like a sack of potatoes the guy went down um in another heavyweight uh, showdown on that pay-per-view uh cuban contender frank sanchez who i've talked about often uh, uh, for my friend carl across the pond you gotta look out for this guy he's good 21 and 0 frank sanchez keeps his unbeaten record intact as he showed off his boxing prowess before displaying his power and stopping Puerto Rican Olympian Carlos Negron, who's now 25 and four with 20 knockouts of his own, by the way. Frank Sanchez, you gotta look out from Carl. He's a big heavyweight. He's moving up the ranks. Um, in other action on that card, uh, former bantamweight world champion, Emmanuel Rodriguez, 21 and two with 13 knockouts, won a technical decision with about ending two seconds into round number 10 in a rematch against the previously unbeaten Gary Antonio Russell, who's now 19 and one uh, after their 20, August, 2021 matchup ended in no contest due to a headbutt in round one. The rematch was again called after a headbutt, but this one occurring in round number nine. 
Anyway, uh, Rodriguez suffered uh, the worst of the clash, but was able to rise to his feet and finish the round before the fight was stopped by the ringside physician as round 10 began. So Puerto Rico's Rodriguez emerged victorious on the cards by scores uh, of 190, 9991, and 9793. So, yeah, Rodriguez by technical knockout. Let me just see if there's any. Oh, yeah. A couple of other uh, fights. Um, rising prospect Vito Milanicki Jr., 13 and 1, scored a, a dominating unanimous decision victory over Limberth Ponce, 19 and 6, with 11 knockouts after 10 rounds of action. And also, we saw uh, lightweight contender um, Michael Rivera, 24 and 0. Uh, dropped uh, Jerry Perez 14 and 2 in the final moment of their eight round duel. Wow, I didn't see it, but that must have been exciting. In the opening bout, though, uh, Gergen, oh my gosh, Hovhannisian 4 0, remained unbeaten with a stoppage victory over Michael Coffey 13 and 3 with 10 knockouts, as the ringside physician advised referee Ricky Gonzalez to halt the action following round number six. So there you go, uh, a whack of action. Uh, on the same night as the women were going toe to toe in London, that took place uh, at the Barclays Center in Brooklyn, New York. Let's move along uh, to uh, Devin Haney. Uh, scored a brilliant victory. Undisputed lightweight champion Devin Haney skillfully defended his titles with a masterly performance at the Rod Laver Arena in Melbourne, Australia, defeating brave and resolute George Cambosos Jr. in a more exciting fight than their previous encounter says on this article here the dream Devin Haney had another dominant performance and won cards by 119 109 118 110 and 118 110 to retain the WBA lightweight super championship and the IBF WBO and WBC titles and in the end it was another brilliant performance from Haney who re reasserted himself as a 135 pound king and a top among today's pound for pound fighters good for him Devin Haney, we've promoted him a lot over the past couple of years here on Talk and Fight. Um, speaking of up-and-comers, though, uh, Peter McGrail. Uh, we mentioned Peter uh, and his brother last week, so I just wanted to bring uh, to my fans out there news of his victory. He broke the spirit of Alexander Espinosa and forced a six-round stoppage with a masterclass display in front of his Liverpool fans. McGrail dropped the tough Nicaraguan with a peach of a backhand in round number four, taking place at the Pro Bellum Liverpool 2 at the Everton uh, Olympia and continued to systematically dismantle his experienced rival. So good, good for Peter McGrail. Also on the fight, uh, on that card, one of my favorite fighters, Jazza Dickens. He won the IBO World Featherweight title after hard, hard fought 12 rounds against uh, South African Lerato uh, Domini. Uh, also on that fight, as I said, Steve Cairns um, extended his uh, professional record, controlling 6 5 fight with Angel Turco, and he won by 60-53 on scorecards. And uh, Joe McGrail, there we go, his uh, brother Peter. Uh, Joe McGrail came through the toughest fight of his fledgling career, he said, as he survived a cut and damaged hand to record a clear point victory. And McGrail defeated Nicaraguan Alexander Taylor at 59 to 55 uh, with brother peter watching on from ringside to move to six and oh by the way but the 19 year old joe said that didn't tell the whole story he sustained a cut by the side of his left eye and hurt his hand both in the second round and he said it was a tough fight I've, I've had so far as a pro in the second round i got cut after an accidental elbow and then the same round i hurt my right hand i didn't throw it as much after that my coach told me to faint with it and i threw it to the body where it was soft and he went on to victory. Good for him. All righty, let's move on now to um, a little bit of a female showcase here coming up. Tijuana, Mexico's two-time world champion, Kenya Enriquez, 24-1 and one with 10 knockouts, will be back in the ring on Friday, October 28th in her hometown of Tijuana uh, in the co-main event of Latin America's ESPN televised knockout boxing series. Enriquez will be facing the experienced Nora Cardoza, uh, and in a scheduled eight round bout presented by Box Stars and associates with TM Boxing. Let's just see. No. So we'll have to uh, see. Um, wow, interesting. Okay, let me just go back here for a sec here. The bout will be the first time the number one WBA, WBC, and IBF ranked flyweight fights in her hometown since late 2018. Hmm. 
didn't realize she'd been out of action that long. So there you go. So um, we're looking forward to uh, more updates regarding uh, that bout and the other fighters. But I want to get to uh, a, a young girl out of uh, Sweden who I featured before, Lucy Wildheart. Lucy Wildheart, uh, you know, she's, she's, she's up and coming. Uh, she's taken a record now with a victory. Um, uh, 10, 10 and 1. Wow. Let's have a quick read here of uh, the article on Lucy Wildhard because it's important with respect to this particular division uh, simply because uh, if she wins on October 22nd, she will be in good standing to take on Amanda Serrano. Uh, she's not the only one looking to take on Amanda Serrano, but I think Lucy Wildhard has a good shot. Let's read this article. Swedish boxing star Lucy Wildhart steps up the pace in her comeback when she makes a quick return to the ring next Saturday, October 22nd, in Frankfurt as she targets a world title shot. The featherweight hotshot, now based out of Essex, scored an emphatic points victory last Friday in Rotherham over Claudie Ferenczi and took a record of 10 and 1 with four knockouts. And will feature on a Wasserman boxing event in a six-round contest against Italian Southpaw Angela Canazzaro. This will be the world-rated Wildheart's third fight in just a month. She made her ring return on September 17th with a punch-perfect performance over a heart Spaniard Eva Contos with an equally dominant showing against Hard as Nails Ferenci that was broadcast live on BBC iPlayer. Wildheart is 29 years of age, is excited to feature on the high-profile card headlined uh, with the IBO World Light Heavyweight Showdown between Leon Bunn and Patrick McCrory, uh, and looking to put on another stellar performance as she hones in, as I said, on a world champion, um, Amanda Serrano. Now, speaking of, all right, I'll, I'll just a quick little quote here out of uh, before I move on. Uh, Wildheart's manager, Richard Maynard, uh, he's uh, CEO of Strike Sports Management, said, Lucy's primed and ready to fight in Germany, and she's looking to put on a good show. Fair enough. She's certainly been active over the last few weeks, which is what she's needed in her career and is featuring on the Wasserman Boxing Card. It'll give her a profile, yet another bo boost. She wants to fight with Serrano, and she will look to make a big statement in Germany. Huh. My point is she better because other fighters uh, wa uh, watching Amanda Serrano eagerly as well uh, would be Sky Nicholson. Scott Nicholson, who we featured before on Talk and Fight out of Australia, um, was fighting on the weekend as well in, uh, I think it was a Matchroom's uh, premiere fight down under, by the way. And it was uh, uh, headlined by, uh, what's his name? Liam Paro and Brock Jarvis. That's where Liam Paro, if I'm not mistaken, scored a first round knockout over um, his opponent. Um, uh, let's see if I got a quick little update here on. Oh, sure. If you just. Leon Paro lands a spectacular first round knockout on Brock Jarvis in Brisbane. So there you go. So, uh, but also on that uh, card, as I said, um, we had, a, 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 I believe, I believe not only Sky Nicholson. Let's just see if in this particular article we have some other information. I wanted to see if there's other information. No, there isn't. I, I, I know there are other women fighting, but uh, maybe that'll show up in uh, tomorrow news uh, stories. And on that the note, I will leave you for today. Thank you for joining me here on Talk and Fight for another episode of Boxing News today. Uh, remember to like, share, subscribe, hit that notification bell. I'll see you later on at 4 p.m. Uh, for Knuckle Up featuring Mike Orr and Cedric Benn. Thank you.